Hey everybody, this is Mike from Jimbu Pal, and uh, today I'm back again for week three with David. We're checking in on his progress using the brand new Jimbu Pal app. Um, if you haven't been watching the series, um, go back either before you get through this video or at the end of this video, check out the first video of this series, week one, and uh, follow along. You can see how uh, David, our co-founder, um, He's, uh, he's using, using the app to, uh, to learn himself. So uh, you can follow along and see what that experience has been like. And we're just kind of talking through it and um, just kind of discussing the things that are challenging and uh, trying to, uh, you know, kind of address those from at least my own personal experience of what was helpful for me. And maybe you'll, hopefully you'll find that helpful yourself. So uh so yeah, let's turn it over to you, David, and uh, I guess show us uh, what you've been up to this week. Cool, yeah. Uh, let me share my screen. All right, can you see it? Yeah. So this is week three, and you know, it actually was pretty exciting because I hit 50% um with my jimbu score yeah so basically i mean for people that haven't watched the other videos what this means is that if i pull up any random you know article in chinese i will be able to recognize 50 percent of the characters um in that article um, which is pretty exciting so i mean here's a here's what my progress kind of looks like right now you'll see like i started to do a little bit more on tones this week Nice. Uh, some interesting things happened since we last talked. So uh, the first two weeks, I was like really consistent with just like sticking to um, seven characters per day. And then this week, <laughs> for the first time, I missed the day, uh, which was kind of interesting because it actually happened to be a day where I was working a lot on, you know, building stuff for Jimbu Pal and just kind of like lost track of time and um, just completely forgot about doing my studying. And so you can see kind of how I, I tried to catch up. Um, oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. So this day, in fact, let me pull up my, uh, let me show you my history. Uh, oh, whoa. <laughs> so, you crushed it on the 30th. On the 29th, I did... I think I learned just two characters probably like as I was, you know, testing some development stuff. Yeah. And then the next day I was like, oh crap, I forgot to, <laughs> to study. So I did 14 characters. Um, and then the following day, May 1st, I forgot to study as well. So yeah. I, and I didn't, I didn't end up trying to cram 14 again, um, but got back onto kind of a better track. Cool. Um, but yeah, so I, I kind of just had to, I've been sticking to the plan pretty diligently. Um, and I realized that, you know, like I tried to pick, play catch up one day and then the second time it happened, I was kind of like, you know what, like I missed a day. It's cool. I'm just going to like ride with it. Yeah. And you know, it's probably better that way. Like, I mean, maybe a few extra ones, but you might run into problems. Like if you are. You know, maybe the day of you learn 14, but if you weren't able to commit, like, I don't know how much time it took you to learn that. But I mean, I have had times where I've blocked off, like I, um, back when I was doing this prior to us building this, I, I went through and sorted down and I picked like G or like shirt and, and I would just learn a ton of characters from that one pinion in a day, but I probably spent cumulative an hour or two through that day. It would be like, I'd be on a road trip with, like some friends and stuff and I would just like pull it out and pull out my phone and, and be checking it kind of for quite a while. Yeah. But um, it might be difficult when you, you know, are starting to review them. If you've crammed a whole bunch in it one day, it might be tough to remember them the next day. Maybe that's the case. I don't, I don't know. That's that, that was sometimes the case for me, but. Um, yeah. So um, it was interesting because Last week was really busy for me just personally. Um, and then 
kind of at the beginning of this week, I realized I was like, let me, let me go back and make sure that the stuff that I learned the past week, I've like, I have reinforced in my head. And also like, I mean, I'm up to a hundred and I mean, I'm at 140 characters kind of partial right now. Yeah. Um, I, like I partially know parts of it. And so I was like, let me just like go through my entire history and like see how much of this stuff really stuck. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it was kind of interesting because there were a lot of characters that I would like remember the meaning for or would remember the opinion for, but like didn't really, didn't fully have it like, um, fully baked in yet yeah um and so i wanted to ask you like what did how did you approach kind of reinforcement when you were when you were first starting out you know i would say i probably did really similar to what you did because i mean i literally would build a list like this on my phone and i would pick and choose characters and move them into other lists and stuff. And I would kind of have some, I mean, it wasn't anywhere near as organized, but it was kind of like a history like you've got here. And I would do the same thing you're saying. I'd go back and look through and see if I, if I remembered them. And yeah, I mean, a lot of times I would forget some and I might have to drop back and, and on some days I might not be able to do, uh, you know, new characters. And I would just have to go through and realize that I had a bunch that I had to, go through and relearn um but i would say i did it similarly to you uh the the way that you just described um you know there's there's kind of the spaced repetition sort of theory that people have of just kind of like your your rate of forgetting something it's kind of uh it's it falls off over time so like you you do something the first day, then you review it again the next day, then you review it again two days later, and then you wait four days, and then you wait eight days, and and it's kind of, yeah. So, um, you know, that's something that perhaps we might, we might have at some point, like, built into it if we find it, you know, totally necessary to, um, to have that in a way that that can integrate with the way that the history is in there. But, Um, that's kind of how I would approach it is using the history and going back and looking through them and, and kind of mimicking that sort of idea with, with stuff that you are having trouble remembering a few days later. Yeah, that makes sense. Have you found with the ones that you, um, you, you kind of touched on this saying like you had some that you, you know, you kind of remember the meaning where you remember the tone. Do you, could you tell like which of those two you think you remember more of? I probably remembered more meanings than opinion. Okay. Um, Interesting. Yeah. I think, I think like the way that my brain works when I'm looking at characters, like sometimes I'll come up with like little visual like cues that that help me remember the meaning. Yeah. Um, let me see if I can find an example. So um, <clears throat> this character right here, yeah. it reminds me of like a transformer on like a telephone pole for some reason. Yeah, okay. And so that's how I always remember it. it's like electric electricity. Yeah. Um, I mean, some of them are like obvious, like, you know, this, this means person, I mean, it looks like a person. Yeah. Um, so sometimes that's a little more obvious than the pain. Yeah, I mean, I see what you mean. At the same time, there are some that like the way it looks, I kind of like in my head make it seem like it's a, uh, like it's spelling out like what. Oh, uh, okay. Like how it sounds. So. Yeah. I'm trying to think if I can find a good example. I don't know if I know one off the top of my head. But yeah, like I'll I'll come up with these little tricks on my head to help you remember stuff. Yeah. 
Well, hopefully the, you know, the, we'll call it like relearning the ones that you've already checked off once. Hopefully that is, it's, uh, you know, it comes faster the second time, but you know, it, it's going to happen. It, it happens. You, you, especially when you have an aggressive pace to it, um, maybe on days that you've set aside to mainly do like some reading, it might be helpful to go back and review some too. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see as, as we go, if it, um, something that, you know, maybe seven a day is pretty aggressive and, and you want to scale that back to try to make sure that you're not forgetting things. Um, yeah, I mean like, so I can kind of show what I was doing today. So I, I grabbed a bunch of characters, um, that I like wanted to just go back over. Um, and, I mean, this is a lot of characters. This is 94 characters. Um, and so, like, obviously I can't, I couldn't go through all of, like, practicing 94 characters in one day. Yeah. But I was able to get through 40 of them um, pretty easily. And, like, what the way that I did it was, because I was like, okay, I, I pinned all these characters, but I want to break it into a smaller section. And so the way I kind of did that was... I went in and I filtered it down. So I was like, let me get, uh, let's see. So I was like, let me get about 40 characters yeah. and out of that 94. And then once I had this kind of selected because of the filter, then I could use the shuffle and it's only shuffling this stuff yeah. Yeah. within a section of my pin characters, which I thought was yeah. cool. Um, and so I basically just like ran through these and made sure I had these down packed. Um, when, when you're, um, when you're using the app, do you, do you usually sit down in one sitting and do it all at once? Or do you kind of pull out your phone throughout the day and, uh, you know, reinforce throughout the day and stuff? Um, I've mainly been doing it in one sitting, but I found that during those times, I need to either be like extremely focused or, or do like break it up into different parts of the day. If that makes yeah. sense. Because I have found that like, it's really easy for me to, it's getting towards the end of the day and I'm like, oh, I need to do my seven characters. And I kind of like nonchalantly will pull it up and go through seven. And it's like very easy for me mentally to think that I have it yeah. in a very quick amount of time. Like I can get through seven characters in about 15 minutes and probably repeat it. But then yeah. I, like clearly stuff wasn't sticking because yeah. next day it's like, oh, I don't really remember it. Or like, like I really have to spend some time going over it multiple times, maybe adding other characters in kind of that pot so that it's yeah. Not like, yeah, you know, if I only have seven, it's really easy to just remember like, okay, I haven't done this one yet. So yeah. Yeah. I think the, my brain like plays tricks on me and, and makes it seem like I have it, but I don't. Yeah. I think that um, definitely spacing it out through the day and coming coming back to it multiple times uh, I think that'll be helpful because you'll just get more more opportunities to test yourself that are kind of like brand new you haven't like just gone over it um, so I would recommend doing that I mean like if anybody watching this in the future this is we're doing this during the coronavirus pandemic but um, you know like when I'd be at work for example it's probably a little different now if you're you know your work schedule is really different, but like if I would go take a break, get up and go get some water or something, I would pull out my phone and run through the list. Like if I had a list of five, somewhere between five and 10 characters, I would literally every break that I had, if I pulled my phone out to check, you know, my Instagram or whatever, what, whatever it might be, I would also pull it up and just run through the ones that I had chosen for that day and maybe even glance over some of the ones like in my history. Um, and, uh, 
you're just then you're just kind of getting more opportunities to to repeat it for yourself. Um, but yeah, so um, just kind of comes with with more and more repetition, obviously. And then the more that you're exposed to them, the more that um, you know. Hopefully, at least if you were to pull up some text, you would pull these out, and you might not remember opinion, but you'd know, I know that I studied this, which is still a big step. I mean, because you, yeah. you can't forget that the, the progress of that is, that still counts for something. The fact that you can pick something out of a list and know, you know, I know that I'm familiar with this at least. Yeah. Is, that helps on kind of the confidence side rather than just the, um, like quizzing yourself and knowing exactly what it is. Um, it was kind of cool today. I I went on um, the New York Times to read an article. And it was like the first character of the article was one that I had like just learned today. Oh, nice. Um, and it was like, oh, wow, that's kind of crazy. And then I started just like going through each character on the page and like still couldn't really like read it because I don't, I don't know any words yet, but yeah. I could I could basically like make out like what it was saying because I knew like most of the character part. Yeah. Yeah, you can kind of pick out, I mean, like a decent amount of meaning, like just like a very vague gist of it. Plus you got pictures in the article and stuff like that, and that's good to get acquainted with for sure. Like um I mean when I first started doing it, I was reading I've got a Bob Dylan autobiography in um mm -hmm. I might have said this in some of the past videos, uh, in, in Mandarin. And so I didn't have any pictures with that. So I would get kind of like a rough idea sometimes. And I, and sometimes I'd Google something and, or not Google, I'd use uh, like the Pleco dictionary or whatever. And I realized that I was, had no idea with something because the characters were forming some word that the meaning was so separated from, uh, the meaning that I'd learned for just that character, but still it was like, you know, um, a surprising amount that I could, I could pick up without really having gone through and studied that many words. And I, I just got to a point surprisingly quickly where it was, it was, uh, you know, not incredibly common that I'd run into characters that I just flat out had never seen before, which is pretty cool. Um, so hopefully, hopefully that won't, um, be won't be that long for you to be kind of in that same place yeah. did it feel kind of like roughly like half of the article or did you feel like maybe what yeah i mean i didn't get through the whole article but like the first paragraph or two like i i recognized a lot of stuff yeah and i was kind of going what's the extension called again um uh Jordan. yeah i was using that so i could like i I don't know the words, but I recognize the characters and it would tell me like the meaning of the word. And so uh, I was starting to like pull, kind of in my head put together like, okay, this and this makes this or like. Yeah. Um, so that was cool. Nice. Cool. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about is so I, I've started to learn the tones and I, I what I've been doing is I'll I'll go to a character and we have the pronunciation in here now. Yeah. Um, and so I've I've been making more of an effort to as I've been reinforcing characters that I used to look at, like to make sure I always listen to the pronunciation. Yeah, that's good. Just to like like I'm not and I'll like try to say it out loud. I still feel like a bit um, like if, if you gave me the opinion for a character and then asked me to say out like all four tones, yeah, I feel very confident that I could do that. And I'm wondering like, do is there any practice that I need to do and just like listening like should i be listening to the tones said together or just focus on what the tones sound like for the specific character i'm looking at Is that uh, like you i you might have cut out on mind a little bit when you were saying 
part of what you said. So I'm not sure if you said, did you say you can or cannot, you'd feel that you're confident that you could or could not go through all four tones for a character. Not. Okay. Um, yeah, then I would say, you know, it would be helpful to, to kind of throw them together back to back. Like, um, it's definitely helpful to hear them uh, next to each other. And um, I, I think that as you're doing this right now is very helpful for of listening to it every time. Um, but another thing that I would do is like, I would, when I was having the same troubles with that, I'd go on my phone, pull up Google Translate and just type out, I type out like, yo like 10 times and just pick different characters every time because at this point you know you might not know and recognize a lot of the ones so just pick a bunch of different characters and then hit uh translate and it'll show you at the top it'll have it written out with the pinion and the tone marks on it and it'll say yo 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 you know and you're just reading along and listening to it and that's a way to get like a ton of them and by doing that they don't end up being in order. They end up being kind of randomized. So you can, you can just type those out because you're probably not going to know a lot of the characters then. And just kind of close your eyes, don't look at the screen, and listen to this string of all the same opinion being said and just try to kind of work it out in your head and then go back and look at it. Um, okay. I found that to be really helpful. Okay. Yeah, that's a good tip. Um, there's another app that I've seen before. Um, <laughs> where it, it will just uh, give you opinion and you just, you just guess it. Um, I'd have to, uh, I'd have to look and, and pull it up, but, um, but yeah, there's, there's one that will just sound out opinion for you and you just guess which, which tone it was. Um, so uh, I think, I think that's a really helpful thing to do. Um, but listening to a lot of them, I mean, is, is a big, is a big part of it. Yeah. Um, do you feel like the, I mean, it's, it's hard to grasp them in general when you first start out too. So like, do you feel like the sounds are distinctive? Uh, enough or not or do you also think maybe just because you're not hearing them all right next to each other you um, you're having trouble discerning between them um I think the first tone is like the easiest one for me to get I guess I haven't really done enough like if if you tell me like, okay, this is the second tone and this is the third tone, it makes sense. But if you just like randomly, yeah. find, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if I would be able to tell. Yeah. I think that, um, you know, the, the third can be kind of tricky because when you listen to, to a uh, pronunciation that, that someone has uh, recorded, to illustrate the tone, like they'll probably go like ma, 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 ma. But that third one, uh, the ma, like lots of times it'll be ma. Like it's it's more just falling and flat rather than actually doing much of a raise on the back end of it. So it can- It's still, um, it's still longer than the, what, the sec second tone? The second is climbing. Yeah. So the second tone, I like to think, so the first tone, it's mainly about the, the ringing out. So like, shung, um, and so it's whether you're using that in a low vo lower voice, like shung, shung, you know, it's, it's the ringing out that, that is really noticeable um, from, from people talking. And then the second one with the rising, it's kind of like in English when somebody's asking a question, um, it's like, uh, like, huh? Or like, um, if you were to, if you were to say a sentence, but it's, there's no real question word at the end of it, and you just kind of raise the tone of your voice, 
to kind of indicate there's a question mark. Like, um, you went outside? Like that? Yeah. Yeah. And um, that, that sort of um, inflection is, is what you kind of can pick up. So like lie. And it's also kind of, it feels softer because, because of that. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, the third tone, like I said, it can be more of a, where you, you feel like you can hear it rising off the backside, but sometimes it just sounds very like, like a uh, hall. It's just kind of like goes down and doesn't really come back up. Um, but another thing that can be helpful is, um, and again, in our specifically recorded examples, you might not hear this nuance, but like with the third tone also, a lot of times when people hit the very bottom of their voice, it just like cuts out. So it'll be like, how? Like you can, you can hear a little like, um, gap in the where, where your your vocal cords just don't put out anything because you're trying to go to kind of the deepest you can mm -hmm. like shoot yeah um and then the final one um i find the final one you just you just hear it more and more and it just sounds really um it it, it sounds a lot more comfortable because it's just very like emphatic like shoot shoot that's falling in quick. Yeah. Gotcha. Like, I feel like for me, like the third tone always felt like you, it's like you're taking what it's, it's, it's weird, but I used to like visualize it. Like I'm talking and I'm just saying what I'm saying. Just like, get, like driving my voice, like into the base of my mouth and then just letting the words just kind of like fall out of my mouth. <laughs> like ma. Um, and Yes, yeah, so I would I would think about it in that in that way a little bit, um, but yeah, I, I would say the first and the fourth tone for me were always the most obvious. First tone definitely the most obvious. Fourth tone second most, and then the second and third were were a little tough to to get used to. Um, so I think that you're you know, it sounds like at least with you talking about the first tone being the easiest, you know, you're, you're pretty consistent with that. Um, and I don't think that that's uncommon just because it's the third tone can be confusing because people will, you know, a lot of things will, a lot of videos and, and people will describe it as that rising or sorry, as the falling rising tone. But a lot of times people will just kind of do a falling low tone and you'll see some videos that explain it that way. And it can be really confusing where it's like, wait, hold up. I thought it was this. And now it's this. Um, uh, yeah, it's just kind of, um, it's unique in that way. If you misunderstood somebody and asked them to clarify, they would probably, um, they would probably give it more of a rising. Exaggerated. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, so continuing to work on that. Um, but yeah, it's been, otherwise it's been good. Awesome. Yeah, we'll, we'll you know, see next week how, how you feel with the recapping stuff. Because, I mean, I won't be surprised if, you know, you get to the end of it and say at the end of six, at the end of nine weeks, you're at, 600 characters but there's still a whole lot you feel like you got it you still got to repetitively go back through a bunch i mean that that's common i mean it's going to be that way but um i think it's it's really big that you're you're at least recognizing those um that it's, it's almost like a process of you know we, we built jimbu pal around showing people and being transparent that like look at this small block of characters if you just know this then you'll start recognizing 80% of what you see. Um, as strange as it is, like for me, it was, I needed to like prove that to myself, even though it was all backed by data and I knew it was true. Um, just the feeling of the recognizing it is almost as powerful as actively being able to recall every time 
oh, I forgot what this opinion is or not. It's yeah. just the fact that you can look at this article and say, wow, I know most of this. This is amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it, uh, so I think that, you know, there's, that's still a, a huge positive, even, even when you, you've obviously got to, you know, you're going to have to go back and review stuff. It's just kind of the nature of it. Um, so, cool. Well, awesome. Yeah, you're coming along. Good stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe, uh, you know, we'll see, you know, tr try out that thing that I mentioned with the tones on your phone and that'll, that'll probably help you out for sure. Um, I, th I think, yeah, you just, you just got to hear a lot of them. And, you know, another thing that I did also early on was I would just pull up a, a video or a podcast in Chinese, just listen to it, even expecting I'm not going to pick up anything from this. It was just, I wanted to hear it spoken. I wanted to hear the tones and just kind of in my head be trying to guess what tones were being used. Yeah. Um, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start doing that. I found that to be really helpful. Um, so, yeah. Cool. Awesome. Good stuff. Yeah, well, we'll, uh, we'll tag up again next week and see, uh, see how it's coming. Sounds good. All right, man. Yeah, talk to you later. How's it going?